You are a few minutes late, by the way. I think we're going to have to work on that. <laughs> I was wondering, don't worry about it. Where are Rick and the girls? Uh, they're back at the hotel. Oh, why? Is everything okay? Do you mind explaining these? <laughs> oh. Are, are you mad that I bought a gift for my nieces? Okay, well, did you hear me tell them no? I mean, we oh, did Jesus. talk about it, right? Yes or no? Just yes or no? Yes, yes, but I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. Uh, it's just that you think Aunt Cassie can just fly in on her magic umbrella <laughs> one day and you can just break all the rules and there are no consequences because I'm Aunt Cassie. Don't you think that you're overreacting just a little bit? I mean, my co-worker lets her kid ride on the front of her car, for God's sake. Okay, well, that person should be arrested. Yeah, totally. So don't go crazy at me. It's literally stuffed animals. Come on. No! It's not. It's a secret that you asked my kids to keep from me. I just thought it would be a nice gift for my nieces. <laughs> you think I don't get it, do you? You know, you and Dad had your secret little codes and your friendship, and it made you feel special. But making my kids like me less isn't going to make them love you more, okay? If you want love, you should probably get a dog. Oh, wow. Wow. That's... A, I, I mean, you always make me out to be the bad guy. Oh. It's, it's actually crazy. <laughs> I feel sad. Because I felt really close to you today. You showed up drunk! Okay, smelling a melt wash instead of liquor. And you know what? Dad used to pull the same shit Shush! in Shush! So I'm, so, I'm sorry. Only he did it better. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? No, fuck that. I was not drunk today. Oh. And you throwing a drink in my face every time I have one is ridiculous. Oh, one drink when the other glass is sitting right there. My God, you just twist everything to make your fucking point. Oh my God, Cassie. Let me ask you something. Were you drunk at the aquarium today? Hmm? You know what? Fuck that. Fuck that. Guess everyone. Everyone's just drunk to you. You know what, here, I'll pay for the drinks. And this should cover the bottle that I'm sure you're gonna get on the way home. God. Hi, I'm Tani Ravi, I'm five foot four, and I'm from Toronto, Ontario. What are you doing? I have to leave you. I have to, uh, I have to go, I have to, I have to leave you. That's my suitcase. It is? You're gonna leave me with my suitcase? Joel, tomorrow's Yom Kippur. I I'm not happy. Nobody's happy, it's Yom Kippur. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not good, I'm not good at doing things like this. Things like what, leaving me? Yes! So don't. Practice a little. Try it again when you feel more confident about the moves. Midge, please. Joel, the rabbi is coming. Yeah, I know he's coming. Five years we've been trying to get this rabbi, and this year we got him. We got the rabbi. I really should go. No, no. Please, I don't understand. I thought, I thought my life was supposed to be different. I thought I was going to be a different person, but tonight was awful. I just sat there and I watched people laugh at me while I bombed. It was one stupid night. And then on top of dying, I'm sitting there thinking about how last week at the temple, the rabbi said that stupid Sodom and Gomorrah joke, and the whole synagogue went nuts. So? So he got more laughs in five minutes than I did in five months. You're jealous of the rabbi? He was in Buchenwald. Throw him a bone. You ever think that you're supposed to be something, and then suddenly you realize you're not? Yes. Married. Wow, that's so good. That's great. Joel, really, that's great. Please. I'm never going to be a professional comedian, Mitch. Never. No, of course not. What do you mean, of course not? What do you mean, what do I mean? What, what do I mean? I mean, what, what did you think all those nights at the club were? I thought they were fun. I thought they were a fun couples thing, like how the Morgensterns play golf or how the Myers Ballroom dance or how the Levens pretend that they're from Warsaw once a week so they can get 10% off of that Polish restaurant that does kielbasa night. I can't believe it. I never knew you were serious about it. Of course it. I was serious about it, Miriam. What part of me did you not think was serious? Well, for starters, you were doing somebody else's act. I told you, everybody does that when they start out. If you wanted to be a comedian, you should have written your own joke. I did. I did the TED thing. I wrote the TED Yeah, and it bombed. Because you killed it. Oh, forget it. Joel, Joel, come on. You have a job. Yeah, but the comedy was the dream. Don't you know what a dream is? A dream is the thing that sustains you through the job that you hate. Since when do you hate your job? Do you even know what I do? You're the vice president no, of- No, 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 no. Do you know what I do? What I do day in and day out, what the inner machinations of my job are? 
No. Neither do I. I show up, I move some paper around, I shift things. I don't, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Maybe if you did, you'd like it more. I just thought that with the notebook, no, with the brisket, I thought you understood. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Hey, I'm Alexander Steele Zonjic and I'm 6'1". So why did you text me? I've been wanting to for years. I wanted both of us to be able to move on. I mean, I was so happy that you were able to go to UT and move forward with your life. I, I didn't want to pull you back. I didn't move forward with my life. Our relationship fucking destroyed me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I violated my role as an educator and I, I should have never betrayed those boundaries. I should have stopped you. I shouldn't have let you kiss me. I, I should have turned you down. Is that what you think happened? You came into the classroom and you kissed me and I should have ended it. You agreed to be my tutor. I mean, you took me to UT. You insisted that I call you Claire. <laughs> You took me away from that dance, and, and you took me to the backseat of that car. I never wanted you to do anything you didn't want to do. You're in denial. Do you know how long it took for me to figure out that I wasn't responsible? That you were the one creating those moments? Do you know how long I hated myself because I thought I hurt you? I lost years, Claire. You know, I, I, uh, I saw my brother the other day. He's, uh, he's 17 now. He's the same age I was. He looks so fucking young. I was just a kid, Claire. I know. I know, and now being a mother, knowing I did that, I, I cannot understand it myself. Oh, you're fucking kidding, right? You brought me here today because you're sick of feeling guilty. I've seen your photos. Okay, you got you got this perfect family, and this big house. My life is not perfect. I can't get a job. I, I can't go to PTA meetings. The way the parents look at me, it is a Google search away. I am one click away from ruin. I'm not just one click away from this, Claire. I have to live with this forever. So do you. Hi, my name is John Walmsley, and I am represented by Faith Holman at Fountainhead Talent. Hi, my name is Shauna Armigan, and my actor number is 0429962. There's nothing wrong with a person taking pleasure in their work. I won't deny my own personal desire to turn each sin against the sinner. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait a minute. I thought all you did was go around killing innocent people. Innocent? Is that supposed to be funny? An obese man. A disgusting man that can barely stand up. A man that if you saw him on the street, you would just point him out to your friends so they could join you in mocking him. A man that if you saw while you were eating, you wouldn't be able to finish your meal. After him, I picked the lawyer. Both of you must have been secretly thanking me for that one. This is the man that dedicated his life to making money by lying. With every breath that he could muster, he is keeping murderers and rapists on the streets. A woman so ugly on the inside that she can't bear to live if she can't be beautiful on the outside. A drug dealer, a drug dealer pederast, actually. And let's not forget the disease spreading whore. Only in a world this shitty would you even try and call these people innocent and keep a straight face.
we see an act of deadly sin in every home and on every street corner and we tolerate it. We tolerate it morning, noon, and night. <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> I'm setting the example. What I have done will be puzzled over, studied, <laughs> and followed forever. I didn't mean to, I didn't, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. You're a fucking psycho. No, 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 I, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. You're fucking sorry. No, no, I can't. I should have seen this coming from a mile away. Don't, don't kid yourself. Oh, I stopped liking this place. I don't know. I don't know when that spiteful parasite started growing inside of me. A spiteful leech that. A spiteful leech that would rather see the world burn than get the raw end of the deal. I'll be free of my hate. And this world will be free of me. Hey, I'm Michael Ellero. explode. No. No, I'm not seeing anyone. Your brain can relax. Cool. Okay. Why are you? Nope. So, both single? Single and married. Yeah. I keep telling people I got the Benjamin Button disease. I'm young, but I've already had cancer, a wife, and a separation. I miss you. I feel like I had to get that out there, too. 
Elliot. What? You don't miss me? No, of course I miss you. Well, that's good, because I feel like we should try again. I got my old job back while I figure out the next thing, which I know is not programming. I'm really happy for you. But I think we should get a divorce. Okay. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. We don't need the label or whatever. I mean, that's when things started getting weird anyway. Just because you're my ex-wife doesn't mean you can't be my girlfriend, right? What you said outside the bar- I know. I know. I fucked up. We both fucked up. I take it back. No, you don't have to take it back. You just said what we both didn't want to admit. It's not that I don't love you. I do love you. You're my first love. I just don't know if you're my only love. You're mine. You can't know that. I guess I should go. Bye, man. Hello, my name is Claire Renault, and I'm five feet tall. Are you all right? They said you've been arrested. I was in holding for uh, three days. And then I was evicted, so. But you're out now. They cleared it up. I told them what we were actually doing. Yeah, yeah. I figured it was better than what they had seemed to think. No, no, I told them to. We're just waiting to hear what the uh, charges will be. No, they're not charging us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not you, maybe. It was a misunderstanding. They apologized to me. They can't charge you. The botnet I made was illegal. Doesn't matter what it was looking for. Anyway, listen, Grace, you the reason... Need a good lawyer. No. I can help. Stop. I came here because you need to stop. Let's go somewhere. We can have dinner. I want to have dinner with you. I want you to leave me alone. Stop calling me. Stop texting me. Ever everything. I... Please. I made a mistake. Lots of mistakes. I get that. But I love you. It makes sense that you're mad. But in a few weeks, I'll talk to them. They're not actually going to press charges. Bill, stop! This is real, Grace. You might get to walk away from this, but... I missed two exams, failed those courses. My parents were pulled in and questioned by the RCMP. Then I explained to them what we were actually doing, but that doesn't stop them from being terrified. They are terrified and ashamed. My dad is too scared to go to the masjid. He won't even answer his fucking phone because he's cute. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Praneet Akila. I'm 5'10", located in Vancouver, Canada. What are you doing? I have to go. I have to leave you. I, I have to leave you. That's my suitcase. It is? You're gonna leave me with my suitcase? I, Joel, I, tomorrow's Yom Kippur. I, I'm not happy. Nobody's happy, it's Yom Kippur. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not good at doing things like this. Things like what, leaving me? Yes! So don't. Practice a little. Try it again when you feel more confident about the moves. Mitch, I... Joel, the rabbi is coming. Yeah, I know he's coming. Five years we've been trying to get this rabbi, and this year we got him. We got the rabbi. Yeah, I, I have to go. No, no. Please, I don't understand. I thought I was going to be something different. I thought I was going to be someone different, but, but tonight was terrible. I just sat there and I watched people laugh at me while I bombed. No, it was, well, it was one stupid night. And then on top of bombing, I'm sitting there thinking about how last week in the temple, the rabbi told that stupid joke about Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and the whole synagogue went nuts. So? So he got more laughs in five minutes than I did in five months. You're jealous of the rabbi? He was in Buchenwald. Throw him a bone. You ever think that you're supposed to be something and then you realize that you're not? Yes. Married. Wow, that's so good. That's really Joel, good. please. Never going to be a professional comedian, Mitch. Never. No, of course not. 
What do you mean, of course not? What do you mean, what do I mean? What do I mean? I mean, what did you think all those nights at the club were? I thought they were fun. I thought they were a fun couples thing, like how the Morgensterns play golf or how the Myers ballroom dance or how the Levens pretend they're from Warsaw once a week so they can get 10% off of that Polish restaurant that does kielbasa night. I can't believe this. I never knew you were serious. Of course I was serious, Miriam. What part of me did you not think was serious? Well, for starters, you were doing somebody else's act. Yeah, I told you, everybody does that when they start. If you wanted to be a comedian, you should have written your own jokes. I did. I wrote the Ted thing. I wrote the Ted thing. Yeah, and it bombed. Because you killed it. Oh, forget it. Joel. Joel. Come on, you have a job. Yeah, but comedy was the dream. Don't you know what a dream is? A dream is the thing that sustains you through the job that you hate. Since when do you hate your job? Do you even know what I do? You're the vice president. No, 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 no. Do you know what I do day in and day out, what the inner machinations of my job are? No. Me neither. I show up, I move things around, I shift through paper. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Well, maybe if you did, you'd like it more. I just thought with the brisket and with the notebook, I thought you understood. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Hey, I'm Rachel Van Duzer. I'm five foot seven, and I'm with Edna Talent Management. So how are we doing? A little pre-trial nerves. It's on. Oh, look, they've got a strong case. There's no question, but it's entirely circumstantial. I mean, nobody saw anything. They don't have a murder weapon, and some of their science is actually going to prove to help us. Their case is vulnerable. Yeah. So you keep saying, although with a little more anxiety each time you say it. My question is, what's our case? Because I don't really have any clarity on that. Our defense is wait and see. I already told you, it's fluid. Fluid? Well, that gives me great confidence. But it, it depends on what they throw at us. Okay, so let me break it down for you then. Our defense is you. You say that you didn't do it, so then explain to me why you ran. And our defense is your wife, who needs to be saying, believe everything that he just said. Is my wife really important here? We've got seven women on the jury. Five of them educated business professionals, just like her. Two of them have been cheated on by their husbands, just like her. And then there's one guy who knows better than most that infidelity doesn't always lead to murder because he's having an affair himself. How could you possibly know that? Oh, I know all these people. I've piggybacked on the algorithms of their Amazon and Google accounts. I've even started targeting their Facebook and Instagram feeds with pro-defense news articles. Is that even legal? Well, it's gray enough to get away with. But see, there's one thing that keeps coming up in all of our focus trials, and that is, if you didn't do it, then who did? We need to offer up another subject. Might I suggest Elena's husband? Well, what about his alibi? Oh, it stinks. I can sink it. You see, this is why we need to get you and your wife on the same page. No, no, no. We can't do that. I loved Elena. My wife can't know. You know, it, it's going to come out regardless. Because we're going to need you to testify. You're going to need to account for why you fled, and only you can do that. So when you get up there, don't pretend to be honest because you've told too many lies. Don't pretend to be a good husband or, or a decent father because you are arguably neither. We don't need to give this jury a good man, just one that didn't commit murder. Well, I don't think Elena's husband did it. We can tend to our ethical egos when this is all over, but for right now, I've got a case to win. Hi, my name is Andrew DeRosa. I am six feet tall, and I'm represented by Karen Bernstein at KB Artists. There is this one theory, like, it says, to understand death, you have to look at birth. So like, while we're in the womb existing, we're not knowing that our next existence is just an inch away. So maybe death is like that. Maybe it's just our next life, but an inch away. Or maybe it's just a big sleep, baby. Lights out, done and done. No. No, I, I refuse to believe that Abby just blinked out. What happened with Abby? Uh, she was cliff diving in California. She landed wrong and broke her neck and drowned. They, they said she didn't feel any pain, but, but how would they know if she felt any pain. And I, 
I was supposed to be there with her, but I got sick like I always do. And I, I don't know, I just, I keep imagining what she was feeling over and over again. And, and without knowing, it's like she just, she never stops dying, so. Stella, even if you were there, you still wouldn't know. But I wasn't there. I wasn't there and she died alone and that's on me. Isn't that how we're gonna die? Drowning just without the water? Our own fluids doing the dirty work. I think about that last breath a lot. Gasping for air, not getting any, no air, just black. But that's only on Mondays. Otherwise I don't dwell on it. <laughs> There's that smile. God, you're beautiful and brave. I wish I could touch you. I lied. When we first met, I've never had sex. I've never wanted anyone to see me. The tubes, the scars. Nothing about it is sexy. Everything about you is sexy. I think you're perfect. Hey, my name is Laura Falski and I'm 5'2".